Shalom and welcome to another weekly Bible studies. We continually write and divide the word of truth. And I'd like to welcome all the YouTubers, social media, and there again, anybody that's viewed past videos or the recent ones, or Lord willing, the future ones. So we're going to go ahead and get started because I've got a lot to talk about uh, to try to get this video in and, and the... Uh, uh, time factor here of about an hour and 15 20 minutes it might go into part two i hope not but what we're going to be talking about a couple of topics here the main topic is going to be the covenant uh daniel 9 27 that uh god made the covenant with uh with israel what do people say that this is the antichrist covenant with israel but we're going to Go through the scriptures. I'm going to look at some uh, the Septuagint. We'll look at the Hebrew. And then we'll look in some uh, New Testament words that also confirm what this Daniel 9.27 was about. Uh, and also, uh, we'll speak some on the gospel with Abraham. I'll go ahead and talk a little bit about that. The gospel was preached to Abraham because God had told him he would be the father of many nations and uh, many nations will be blessed by his seed, which is a spiritual seed through Christ and the uh, ratified of the new covenant, the promise, the epigalia, the promise that God made to Abraham. And that promise would be through uh, the singular seed, Jesus Christ. And of course, that would establish uh, the law of faith, people. Uh, I've talked to you some about the law of faith, the law of Moses. God's law has always been by faith in what we believe. If you believe him, you believe his word, that's the law. Uh, now, in Israel, Israel was in unbelief. That's why Paul says that God has showed mercy on us because of their unbelief. So unbelief would be, of course, the opposite of belief. So the law, they did not believe God. So the law of faith has always been about believe in what God said. Start from Adam, and that's how it's going to end, with believing God uh, that he give his creation commandments and the renewed covenant is a spiritual covenant. It's when God writes his commandments on the fleshly tables of the heart, puts it in our mind, writes it on our heart. So very important to understand that. So, so God's, when he promised Abraham the gospel was preached. Paul reveals that. We'll try to go over that in Galatians. We'll look at that when Paul, there is some things there in the third chapter of Galatians I've got to go over with you. So primarily to understand the gospel was preached to Abraham and then that gospel would be the gospel of Christ, which would be the promise that God made to Abraham. And in this promise was the covenant. So that's why I'm combining the both here. So what we're going to look at, we'll go to uh, Galatians real quick, and we'll look at what Paul is bringing forward in the, his writings there in the New Covenant, the New Testament writings, uh, to confirm out of the old. And then we'll go back to Daniel and take a look at the uh, Daniel 9.27, which is... Probably at this time, people, is probably the most talked about and very, very important prophecy of, because it's the end time prophecy. And there again, so it's, it's important in the fact that if you're following most or the majority of the tribulation being seven years, and we're looking for the Antichrist to make this covenant with Israel. This Israel that's what's going on even this morning as I speak. There's a lot of rockets being fired in from Gaza. There's been some generals or some uh, some Palestinian leaders that have been uh, killed the last 24 hours or so. So a lot going on, people. Uh, and, of course, the elections has not even been confirmed there. Uh, but Netanyahu is, I think, calling the shots at this time. Uh, but uh, this started last night, I do believe. I listened to a little bit of it early this morning. But uh, the point 
you got to come to understand that most teaching out there, and I'm sure, and you could be a follower of some of those teachings, that the uh, seven-year uh, tribulation will start when the Antichrist uh, makes a covenant, and in the middle of the seven years, he'll break the covenant, there'll be a temple built, and then he'll desecrate the temple by saying he's God, and all of that, and then, of course, Prior to the seven years, right at the seven year, is the rapture. So that's that's most of the context of what the the so-called big preachers, uh, apostate preachers, preach. Uh, and so very important that we understand what this, the the true prophecy here, because you can be drawn away, people, because you're not. Uh, if you're looking to be raptured out seven years before, uh, right before the peace treaty starts with the Antichrist, the, the, uh, the Antichrist is going to make, I mean, I don't even, I mean, think about it, people. God, the Antichrist making a covenant with Israel. I'm not saying that there's always the, the presidents, the world leaders, the UN, it's always they talk about the, uh, peace and safety, peace and safety, to bring peace to the earth. Of course, uh, but the covenant that's, uh, that God's made with Adam and Noah and Abraham and Isaac and Jacob and David, many covenants in the scripture. Of course, the main covenant is uh, the promise that God made with Abraham. So let's pick it up. Let's go to Galatians third chapter real quick. And I had... Uh, Thought I'd start at Daniel 9, 26, but let me go back to Galatians so we can lay a better foundation, I believe, for we, because uh, Paul is going to talk about the covenant here uh, in Galatians. Okay, we want to go to Galatians, uh, third chapter. And we'll just pick it up here and run through what Paul is talking about here. Faith by works and by the law. And he's talking to the, he says, you foolish Galatians who have bewitched you that you should not obey the truth before those eyes Jesus Christ has been heavenly set forth, crucified among you. His, this only would I learn, this is uh, verse two of you, received ye the spirit. Did, did he receive ye the spirits by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith? And Paul goes on. Are you so feel, foolish, having begun in the spirit, and now you're made going to be completed by the flesh? Have you suffered so many things in vain, if it be yet in vain? He therefore that ministered to you the spirit, and worketh miracles among you, did he do it by the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith? And of course, the word, you got to be careful here, people. The word miracles is not... Uh, Simeon, the word miracles here is dunamis. Now remember this word dunamis, it actually, uh, it does have a power of miracles, but it, it means a force or a power, and it comes from 1410. Now just remember 1410, 1411, because there's a Greek word that's used in Daniel 9, 27, of the word confirmed the covenant with many. So just remember, we'll come back uh, when you're looking at the Greek. It's going to come from the dunamis here. Okay, so in verse 6, even as Abraham believed God, and it was accounted to him for righteousness, uh, know ye the scripture, foreseeing God would justify the heathen through faith, preach before the gospel, here we are, people, unto Abraham, in thee shall all nations be blessed. And you can go back to Genesis. And so Paul is saying the gospel was preached to Abraham because through Abraham's seed, all nations would be blessed and that seed being Christ's seed. So uh, very important. So this is the gospel that was preached to Abraham. It's the same gospel because Christ is the, was the promise and the covenant. So then they which be of faith are blessed with faithful Abraham. And that means that which are are out of faith, that means you believe. Faith is a noun, uh, believe is the verb. Okay, verse, uh, Galatians 
For as many that are of works of the law are under the curse, for it is written, Cursed is every one that continueth. Uh, not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God is evident, for the just shall live by faith. And remember the law of faith, people. It's, Paul goes into the law of faith. And we know faith gets the victory that overcomes the world. And we know, and you know that in, when we go further in, in the teaching of the confirmed new covenant, now, it's, Paul reveals that faith is, faith is the law of God, the law of faith. We establish, we stand. Uh, we know the 7,000 had a good report by faith. That's who Elijah will give the testimony and prophecy to restore all of that. It was lost by the, 10, uh, the 12 tribes being scattered, the 10 northern and the Southern Judah destroyed 70 A.D. And, and still is not those 12 tribes, even though they are, the land has come back in through the degree in 1948 through Truman, but that is not, they are not the, uh, the remnant of uh, the Jacob's trouble. Uh, that is still Jacob's trouble and Jacob will be saved out of his trouble, but not until Christ gets here, people, until Christ puts his feet on the Mount of Olives. Now, uh, so remember that uh, looking at the promise that we're talking about will be the covenant. And, and we're going to see that Paul said it was already ratified. It was ratified when God made the promise in Genesis 15 chapter. So it's already, God calls things uh, are not as though they are, so it was already, uh, as Paul says here, he only uses this Greek word one time, he said it was already ratified. Pro, the word pro is used in this Greek word, means before, and that's when it uh, was ratified by God to Abraham uh, in Genesis 15 chapter, even though it took 42 generations later for the promised seed or for Christ to be born and then for him to start his ministry and then renew the covenant through the blood covenant when he died at Passover. It's very important to understand and 430 years after God had ratified the covenant with Abraham, that's when the law of Moses come in effect. Okay, so very important here. So now let's look as we as Paul is talking right here uh, in 3.13. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law and made a curse for us. For, ever, for it is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. Should Christ fulfill that when he died? That the blessing of Abraham would come into being. This is Gedemiah. It would come into being on the Gentiles in Jesus Christ that we receive, Lambano, take a hold of the promise of the Spirit through faith. So, and of course, the promise of the Spirit through faith is when the Holy Spirit was poured out at Pentecost. That's why Christ had to leave so the Comforter could be sent by the Father. And, and that Spirit, is Christ said, is the truth. And then it would be poured out on all flesh at Pentecost. And that was also a promise. So you had, you had the promise seed made, the covenant made by promise, you have the Holy Spirit given by promise to the Father. You have eternal life, the gift of eternal life, promised to those that are in Christ and Christ in them, in the Word in them, and, and, and you in the Word uh, by belief. So we have the, all these promises, plural. But the one promise singular is Christ's seed, which the other promises would come in effect. So Christ had to come and the covenant had to uh be fulfilled and he had to die the water and the blood had to be poured out and then the promise of the Holy Spirit had to come and then of course in that promise through Christ is eternal life Christ said uh, you search all the scriptures and then them you think he was talking to the Pharisees and the progenitors of Judah he said you think you have eternal life but I say it's those or they that testify of me that have eternal life, see. So, very important to understand. Now, 
in Hebrews 11, when, when the 7,000 that didn't bow the knee before Baal, and they all had a good report uh, through faith, because faith there is the law, belief is the true law of God, and but they didn't have, we had better promises. We had better promises through Christ, through the Holy Spirit, eternal life, witnessing. So, so that's why the when you finish reading in Hebrews 11, it said they all died not receiving the promise. Uh, promises, and of course, they didn't receive the Holy Spirit because they were all dead before the Holy Spirit was ever set at the appointed Pentecost, and that didn't take place uh, to 50 days after Christ had first fruits, after Christ had died and rose and ascended, and in 50 days started from the Feast of first fruits. you count the Omer count, and that's uh, when the Holy Spirit fell. So, so Paul is kind of going back and bringing things out of the old here and tying them in because the promise was made to Abraham in Genesis 15. So he, Paul, and, and three, Galatians 3.15, the law of the promise. Brethren, I speak after the manner of men, though it be but a man's covenant, yet it be confirmed here. The word confirmed is authoritative or to ratify people. So it be confirmed, Paul said, no man can disnull it or add a thing unto. Now, real quick, I want to go into, uh, I'm kind of talking fast because i got so much I want to bring, get in this video. Uh, this word addeth to here, 1928, to a point besides or supplement or add to, it actually comes from the middle voice, 1909. Now, in the past videos, when I talk about Revelation 22, 18, 19, for those that understand the prophecy, which is the spirit, the prophecy, which is the testimony of Yeshua, which is a witness in us, it's just to be confirmed in us. Well, that's when the Bible says in Revelation at the very end, 22, 18, anybody that adds to it, anybody that adds to the prophecy, God will add the plagues unto them. So now this is Paul's using this word that comes from the middle voice of 1909, which add to in Revelation 22, verse 18. It is also a Greek word that it says add to is 2007, 2007 in the Greek. But that comes from the sister word of 1909. So see, all these, all these Greek words here relate to the same. So Paul, before it's ever penned in Revelation, Paul has said you can't add to. Now the book of Revelation reveals what God is going to add to those that add to the prophecy, which is the plagues of the book. And anybody that cuts off the prophecy, uh, the Spirit of God says he will take them out of the book of life and out of the holy city and the things that are written there, and which the holy city refers to the new Jerusalem that will come from the new heavens to the new earth, and that will be after the millennium reign. That would be in the eighth day. So right here, very important to understand what these words mean. So Paul is saying no man is going to disannul, disannul it, or no man better add thereunto. Very, so I wanted to bring this in because this ties with the, uh, Revelation 22, verse 18. If you go back and look at those videos about the prophecy and the testimony, I go over Revelation 22, 18, 19 uh, very thorough, but I wanted to show you that Paul's even puts even adding to the covenant here. Uh, all right, so now to Abraham and his seed were well, the promises made. But Paul says not to seeds, plural, because this seed is singular, and he's going to tell you what the seed is. And not as many, but as of one. And that is thy seed, which is Christ. So that's the promise, that's the covenant. And it's the man, Christ Jesus, that fulfills the man covenant that God made the promise through Abraham. So think about this, people. It is through the Son of God, the man Christ Jesus, the Word made flesh, and he would fulfill the man covenant. So God's covenant through his Son would fulfill the promise that he made to Abraham. 
How awesome is this? Because no man has ever kept any covenant that God made with him. Any of the covenants that God made except the man Christ Jesus, his only begotten son. So, so this is awesome, people. This is so, when you come to see uh, what Paul's revealing as he goes all the way back to Genesis. So, very important here uh, that you understand this. Now, so Abraham and his seed were the promises made. So that would be the spiritual seed of, that's us, the believers, by faith, justified by faith. And it would be Christ's seed, of course, him that we would believe in. Okay. And this I say that the covenant that was confirmed before of God in Christ, uh, the law which was 430 years after, cannot dissolve. Paul comes back again. And he says the law, Moses' law, cannot disannul that it should make the promise of no effect. Now, here's this other word. It's only found one time, used one time, and this Paul says, and this I say, the covenant that was confirmed before of God in the man Christ Jesus, the Word made flesh, His only begotten Son, before, right here, is a procuro, and it comes from P-R-O, which means before, pros. And that's why the definition there, people, says to ratify previously, confirm before. Now, let's think about that. So what is Paul revealing? He's revealing that the promise that God made to Abraham before was back in Genesis. And that it was, in God's uh, mind, it was already ratified. It was already, he calls things that are not as though they are. He's declared the end from the beginning. The end is when Christ come and, and died and rose again and that co co covenant New Testament was in his blood that he poured out at that appointed Passover. So in the, God has declared the end from the beginning what he made with Abraham, see, so that, that's it is amazing, but this you got to understand. Now, when we we'll go back to Daniel nine twenty nine and tie all, I mean, excuse me, not nine twenty nine, nine twenty seven, and we'll tie all this in. But I wanted you to lay this foundation here. What Paul's talking about in Galatians, and and I want to show you now. I'm going to show you something here uh, about grace. Here we're saved by grace through faith. Faith is the law, people. If you believe, that's the law of faith. We established that. That's his domain. Now, uh, now uh, let's, let's, Paul's going to say something here about grace here. Of course, he talks, of course, a lot about grace. But let's see if it's uh, right here. Uh, Galatians 3.18. For if the inheritance be of the law, or out, ek, out of the law, there is no more promise. So if the law was where the inheritance was, people, then then why did God make the covenant of the promise to Abraham, or which would be Christ's seed, if the law of Moses was going to be where the inheritance was? Okay, but God gave it to Abraham by promise. Okay, now... This word gave, people, look what this word, but God gave what? Abraham the promise, in other words. All right, now let's look at the word gave here. Okay, the word gave is G5483. Now it's the middle voice of, guess what word, people? It's the middle voice from 5485. And guess what that word is? That's the word grace. Now the definition. Let's read it. The spirit of uh, the spirit of God granted to Abraham as a favor, gratuitous kindness, pardon, to rescue, deliver, forgive, or grant uh, freely, give or grant. So this is the middle point, middle voice of grace, people. 
right here, 54, 8, God gave favor, grace to Abraham through the promise. That's, why, that's how we're saved. This is the singular seed of Christ. We're saved by grace through faith. I think this, uh, people, because grace is preached mainly in the context that the new covenant, we're saved by grace through faith. At least any man can boast, not of works. Uh, but uh, we've been created in Christ. All right, so, but, so they, grace, 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 by faith, but see, the grace started with Abraham. God gave favor, grace to Abraham because it would through, be through Abraham's seed that the promised seed, Christ, would come. And for all those who believe, uh, it started with the Jews, but when it comes to the Gentiles, it's, we don't, there's not a genealogy, Paul says. To us Gentiles, it, we are the, that's why we're called the spiritual children of Abraham. Now, to some of those believers in Judea, which the gospel went to first, they were through the seed of Abraham, literally through the genealogy, through Isaac, through Jacob, through the 12 tribes. Paul was a Benjamite. He was from the tribe of Benjamin. He was an Israelite. He was a Hebrew. So, but he became a new creature in Christ once he believed and 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 he wrote two thirds of the New Testament, the Renewed Covenant. But for us, uh, he he's still the being born of the Spirit. He would still be the spiritual seed of Abraham, but he was also from the genealogy through Abraham. But us Gentiles, uh, there's not a genealogy. Paul says not to look at the, any kind of genealogy uh, because we're born of the Spirit. And the wind blows, the Spirit blows like the wind. Nobody knows where it's going to blow, where it's going to land, but God. So uh, very important. Uh, so right here, I wanted to give you this word, show you that God gave, granted gave favor to Abraham through the promised seed, which is to be saved if, if belief in Christ. And that is through grace or by grace through faith, people. But the grace didn't start uh, when most of these preachers, the grace started with Abraham. And guess what? Noah found grace in the eyes. you got to understand also God's granted grace from Adam all the way through. Grace and mercy. See, so uh, the, to hear people say that we're the only we're in the dispensation of under grace, well, Abraham, you right here it is. So there's no arguing about it. If you want to believe it, believe it. There it is in Scripture. So now let's pick it up at 19. Wherefore then the service of the law is added because of transgression. Now, what Paul has revealed, until the transgression started with Adam, people. All the way back to Adam, when, when Adam and Eve broke the law of belief, faith, when they said, when they would believe God, and then Satan <clears throat> deceived them. And so, uh, so the, tra the transgression started all the way back in the garden. Until the seed should come to whom the promise was given, uh, made, and it was ordained by angels in the hand of a mediator, and the angels came to Abraham. And, of course, uh, the mediator is a mediator of one, and, of course, that is God. So, but the angels did come to Abraham and tell him uh, uh, the promise of the, of the Isaac the seed would be through the promised seed Isaac would be the promised seed, not Ishmael, and that uh, God would make made the covenant, the man covenant, and Christ would be the the man Christ Jesus that would fulfill that covenant. Three twenty one is the law then against the promises? God forbid. For if it had been a law given, which could have given life, there it goes, Paul goes back to life again. Verily righteousness should have been by the law. But the scripture hath concluded all under sin, all man under sin, that the promise by faith of Jesus Christ be given to them there again that believe. Because remember, when you believe, and John reveals this, 
uh, when you believe, you're born again. When you believe in the name of the Son of God and you love one another, that's the new birth. Now we got to grow up. So now you got to be taught by the Holy Spirit. So that's the order. So Paul is saying right here, by faith of Jesus Christ be given to them that believe. But before faith came, we were kept under the law, shut up into the faith that should come afterwards be revealed by the Spirit, or this, of course, revealed when Christ, they didn't receive him, uh, but it's revealed through us by the Holy Spirit and the Word. Wherefore, the law coming to be in our schoolmaster bring us to Christ that we be justified out of faith. But after faith has come, we are no, under, no longer under a schoolmaster. Now, Paul's going to talk about the law of faith here. For we are all the children of God by faith in Christ Jesus. For as many as have been baptized into Christ, put on, the, uh, put on Christ, there is neither Jew nor Gentile, Greek, or there is neither bond or free, there is neither male or female, for we are all one in Christ Jesus. If ye be in Christ, then you are Abraham's seed, singular, and heirs according to the promise that God made with Abraham. Uh, Paul talks about the law of faith in Romans, the third chapter. I was going to say, this is Galatians 3, but if you go back to Romans 3, 25, 26, 27, Paul will call it, uh, the, we established the law, the faith. Okay, so hopefully, people, this has kind of helped, went over Galatians 3 there kind of fast, but you picked up some very important words that the, God had already made the covenant, he had already ratified it, uh, and that was happened with Abraham 24 generations later. The man Christ Jesus, the word made flesh, was born, and he fulfilled the promise that God made with Abraham, which is to confirm the covenant for many for one week. Oh, so that's Daniel 9, 27. Okay, so now let's, let's kind of pick it up there and go to back to Daniel, and let's look at some of these words. And we'll tie in some with the Greek. Uh, we'll look some with the Hebrew. So uh, right here, I want you to remember this right here, though. I'll back up here. Uh, right here. Right here. Uh, Galatians 3.15. I want us to look at the covenant here. Okay, this uh, this is the covenant, the promise that God had made with Abraham. Okay, now in the Greek text, I want you to just remember this right here, that this word covenant right here, this, I'm going to go ahead and highlight this, uh, this. Okay, this word covenant being a, a, a noun is accusative, singular, feminine. It means accusative means in the direct object motion toward time. Okay, so now just remember, I wanted you to see accusative, singular, feminine now in this word covenant. And then I want us to go back to, let me go back to the, King James here. Well, I'm going to have to get the apostolic Greek, uh, and that's the word covenant right here. Validated, this is also, that means to ratify in the Greek. Uh, the Hebrew is also, I'll show you what the Hebrew word means in just a second. Let me put this in uh, highlight in yellow. So this is out of the apostolic Greek. And then I look at the King James and I go back to look at the apostolic. I go here to the apostolic because now I can go back to the Old Testament and get to Septuagint. So if I right click on covenant here and go to the Old Testament translated from the Septuagint, here we are. So there's the covenant, uh, the first one, Genesis 6, 18. All right, now there's, uh, that's Noah's covenant there. So let's come on down to, uh, all right, here we are. 
uh, Genesis uh, 15, 18. And that day the Lord attained, uh, and this is uh, the Greek word here, uh, ordained, excuse me, the Greek word here is uh, authority, controller. Uh, this was used, uh, Paul used the same word where in Galatians we just left. So uh, he, he ordained a covenant. Now here's the word covenant, 1242. And we see that uh, uh, saying to Abraham and to your seed, uh, There we go. To to covenant to your seed, I will give this land from the Egypt to the river Euphrates to the Nile. That's also the land. The same day he made that covenant, land covenant also. So and of course this was at Passover, uh, before Passover was actually Passover. You might say it was the same time of the year. Okay, right here. And that uh, day the Lord made that's. Uh, well, I can't get this thing to scroll. Let's see. Well, there we go. Okay. So I wanted you to see this word covenant. Now, what I want to do here is I'm going to go to the Septuagint because that's in the Greek, Old Testament Septuagint. I've got the translation Septuagint here. And I find this very interesting also. So when we're looking at the word uh the covenant in the Septuagint right here, you take, there, here it is, the Greek words for covenant, 1242, and notice, people, it's exactly in the accusative singular feminine. So I know, I don't want to make this complicated, but the point being is you have different genders. Of course, you have, uh, you have the dative, genitive, accusative, you have all these different cases but this happens to be the accusative, the same thing that Paul used. Uh, well, let's go back here and I'll show you. Well, I've got to stay in the, I've got to stay in the polygot here. So let's go. So this covenant is accusative here in Galatians right here. Same thing. Remember, I showed you this right here. All right, let's flip on. Stay with me here. Let's flip on the Greek text here. And there it is. I'm showing you exactly the same word. Uh, noun, accusative, singular. So when I go to the apostolic, that'll get me back to the Old Testament. And we're going right back. The same word, the covenant was made, Genesis 15. Uh, well, let's go this way. Here we are, 15, 18. I'm just showing you uh, the word covenant here. We highlight this in yellow, and I want to make sure by the Greek Texas they've got to fit old or new, uh, old uh, Septuagint and the New Testament Greek. So let's look at the uh, Septuagint Greek here, and I've already got it highlighted here. So it's just to show you, there it is. It's a noun, accusative, uh, singular, feminine. So. The covenant that was made with Abraham is the same covenant Paul's talking about, uh, people. It's the same, exactly the same, uh, exactly that covenant uh, is the same covenant, and that would be the promise seed of the New Testament covenant, people. So, so right here, now this is 430 years before God made or Moses, the law, that Moses got the law from uh, from uh, Mount Sinai there when he went up to get the Ten Commandments. So 430 years earlier when God made the promise to Abraham, now Paul is revealing that same covenant, man's covenant, uh, that can't be an older added to. That's the New Testament. That's the covenant. And that is belief by the law of faith. So we establish the law of faith. Now there again, uh, when you have the two witnesses stand up, Elijah will testify, prophesy the testimony, and confirm and restore the 7,000 and did not bow the knee to Baal. Had a good record by what? Through faith. They had a good witness through faith. John, the beloved John, will 
uh, verify and the prophecy, the testimony of John, well, we had better promises. And that's why he says, I bear record of the word of God, the testimony of Jesus Christ, which is the spirit, the prophecy. And see, both covenants were fulfilled. In other words, God said to Elijah, I did not, Elijah, I've got 7,000 men that did not bow their knee at this, at this time. I have 7,000. Now, at the present time, under the new covenant, also he says he has a, seven, a, a remnant of election by grace, which come all the way back from Abraham, see? If you can see, uh, and that's why you have to have the two witnesses. The One of the witnesses through the old covenant, uh, being the prophet Elijah, will confirm the law of faith through 7,000 that had a good witness by four. We established the law of faith, people. So there again, that's your two witnesses about the law of faith. It's not about the law of Moses. Uh, now, the law of Moses, Paul told you why that was put in effect, because of the transgression that goes all the way back to Adam. See, So very important. I hope you're coming to see this. All right, now. So you say, okay, Larry, we got Genesis, we got Galatians, we're looking at the covenant, we see this in the Greek, all right. Let's look in the King James here. In the same day, the Lord made a covenant with Abraham, okay. Now notice this word here, made, people. Now this word made in the Hebrew is, let me highlight that in also yellow. Uh, let me highlight this in yellow, okay. Okay, the definition here, or it, it's uh, uh, karath, it's a to cut off, down asunder, destroy, consume, especially uh, covenant, make an allowance or bargain, passing between two pieces, all right, let's let's look at let's look at the Hebrew here just a minute, and let's go back, uh, and and Hebrew here. Now here we are with this word, uh, and you see it also fifteen eighteen, which I have here, uh, and this and it means to cut off. Now, uh, as I just read this to you, now in the if I'm looking uh, in the where it's using this word uh, made uh, and the covenant here, well, in the in the Greek text, it's going to use ordained. Now, this word in the Greek means an authority that is controller, respectful title, God, Lord. So God made that. And, of course, in the Hebrew, when it's using the cutting of flesh, that's when, if you notice right here, uh, 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 well, let's go back to the the Hebrew, and this is the one talking about the cutting of the flesh. Uh, right here. This uh, we went over. I went over this week before. But what God had said, He said, uh, He said right here. He said to him, "Take me a heifer, a three years old." A she goat of three years old, a ram of three years old, and a turtle dove, and a young pigeon. And so Abraham did this, and then he said unto him, All these, and divide them in the midst, and lay each piece one against another, but the birds divide not. So this is what God had told, this is making the covenant, is when he took these animals and cut them and laid them uh, the flesh, the cutting of piece. That's why in the uh, Hebrew, that's the definition. So remember the definition there, uh, 30, uh, uh, H3772. So uh, so this is when he told him what to do with these animals. And then Abraham fell in asleep, and then he got a dream about his seed being in Egypt. So you can read all that. But the main thing I want you to see is this H3772. Okay, now... From here, I want to go to Daniel. We've been to Genesis. We've been to Galatians. We've looked at the Hebrew word and the covenant, and we looked at the made in uh, 
the Greek and also uh, covenant in the Greek. Now let's go to Daniel. So let's go to Daniel. Uh, Daniel 9. And. All right. I'm going to close this window because remember that. I want to show you exactly what. Let's look here in 9. We'll pick it up 926 here. All right. Now notice right here. And after three score and two weeks shall Messiah, everybody, there's no problem with this, be cut off, but not for himself. Now this word cut off, people, is what? It's the same word that when God made the covenant with Abraham. It's H3772. So Christ was, uh, follow this now, people, uh, when God told Abraham to take a heifer and three ram goats and these animals, cut them in half, and then he went through them like a flaming fire. He went through them when Abraham went to sleep and burnt and, and uh, you know, just burnt that, that sacrifice up while Abraham was in a dream of sleep. But the next day, the same day he made the covenant, it said, uh, then that's when uh, he, that he would also be the land covenant would be made on the same day, which is a Passover, people. It's a future. It was Passover then before Passover was, was actually implemented as a feast of unleavened bread. But that's when actually that whole covenant that God made with Abraham and the, that covenant will be fully filled when Christ gets here. We'll all be back in the land for the first time that uh, the, the land covenant made with Abraham from River Euphrates to the great the River Nile. All of that will be fulfilled when Christ gets here. See? And we'll all sit down and we will, he said, I will not break this bread or drink this wine and will not eat the bread or drink the wine until I do it new with you and my Father's kingdom. So the future Passover of the new covenant even though the new covenant started 2,000 years ago, 42 generations before that was already, the promise was already made to Abraham. 42 generations later, Christ come and fulfill the covenant. Nearly two days, 2,000 years later, it will actually come to pass. That's how awesome it is. Okay, so now, what I was going to show you, now here's Daniel 9.26. Now tell me, people, how was Christ how did he confirm the covenant? It was a blood covenant. His flesh was cut to pieces. And, it, and the sword pierced his side, and the water and the blood poured out. So right here, how was he cut off? Here's the definition. It, it, it's the same definition, but it was Christ that was cut off and was uh, the blood baptism took place, not the animals. He was the sacrifice for all right here. Now, how in the world can these people uh, say that if they see this was cut off, this was how God made the new covenant. His son had to, the water and the blood had to be poured out. He had to die, and then the water and the blood be poured out for this, uh, for this covenant that he made with Abraham to come into being. And this is the same word when he told Abraham to take these animals. Now, so, so the fathers used his only begotten son to fulfill this. Now, how can, how can this be the covenant? This is the covenant, how he was cut off. But guess what, people? He wasn't cut off for him. He died for the sins of many. The covenant was made. He said, in my blood is the New Testament, the new covenant, which will be poured out for the sins of many. So... He, now watch, uh, understand it. So, now notice what he says, and the people of the prince shall come and destroy the city and the sanctuary, and the end there will be a flood, and upon the end of the war, desolations are determined. All right, in other words, 70 AD, and continually until he comes, there will be nothing but 
a, a, a burdens of stone to anybody who touches Jerusalem. What's going on now, what's going to go on even when the beast trots down Jerusalem for four, and the false prophet for 42 months as the witnesses are prophesying against them with the pouring out of the plagues, this is all going to be exactly, there is no going to be, uh, this the covenant here, when Christ was the lamb slain, that was the covenant. Now, right here, when you go to 927, and he, the one that was cut off, will confirm the covenant with many for one week. But in the midst of the week, he will cause us, people, this is not future. In the midst of the week is when Christ died, he cut off. Uh, the uh, ablation to cease the overspreading of abominations, which were the abominations were the sacrifices uh, when they were sacrificed. When Christ died, they still co co continued to sacrifice people, even though God didn't dwell in that temple made with hands anymore. Christ was at the right hand of the Father in heaven, so, but they continued to sacrifice till the prince came and, and said, uh, the armies of uh, Rome destroyed Jerusalem, 70 AD, which Christ prophesied in his parables. Now it says right here, uh, and the abomination shall make desolate until, right here, until even the consummation, and that determined shall be poured upon the desolate. And the consummation was when uh, Jerusalem was destroyed, and that would be the permanent shall be poured upon the desolate because it's, it's still desolate in the sense of, there's still a Sodom in Egypt, a spiritual Sodom Egypt is still there today, will be there even when uh, the two witnesses stand up. Okay, now, I want to show you something here in the Greek. Everybody, but the Greek actually does a better job uh, in understanding the, this prophecy than the Hebrew does here, actually. Now, I know a lot of people are not going to like that, but let's look at the uh, polygon here. That's the, in the English of the Greek text here. Now, notice right here, uh, the Greek says, he shall strengthen, and then the Hebrew says confirm. Now, the word strengthen, remember I told you to remember, <coughs> remember the Greek word 411, 1411 is dunamis. It comes from it's just the word 1410, but guess what? This word strengthen is 1412. It comes from the Greek word dunamis, 1411. Now remember, 1411 is dunamis, people. So strengthen is, is miraculous in the sense of, of 1411, but he enabled or strengthened the covenant. How did he? How did God strengthen through Christ, as 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 the uh, pouring out the blood and the water for our sins? But the strength of the covenant, He had to go away to send the promise of the Holy Spirit. Now I make a new covenant in the house of Israel, not like I did when I brought them out by the hand, when I brought them out of right hand, when I brought them out of, the hand, of Egypt with Moses. But now I will write my laws and they're put it in their mind, write it up on their hearts. And that's two commandments now. And that's to believe in the Son, in the name of the Son, Jesus Christ, and love one another. The Old Testament commandments was to, to love God with all your heart, mind, and soul, and your neighbor as yourself. So he strengthened the covenant. That's why we have a better promise, people, than those that 7,000 didn't bow the name. Uh, need a bell because we the Holy Spirit now we're born of the Spirit Christ said you must be born of the water and the Spirit which is the living word and the Spirit uh, the truth before you enter the kingdom so this is this is the strengthen of the old and the new see it's not brand new it's a strengthen people because of the Spirit you're born with you are now the sons and daughters of God, not by the will of the bloods, will of man, will of flesh, but of the spirit of Yah that you're born now. Same, but guess what? How was Christ born, literally? It, he is the son of the spirit. He's the son of God. 
we are born through the Spirit, not coming back through uh, our mother's womb. Uh, this is the strength of the covenant, people. This is why right here, he will, not the Antichrist is going to strengthen the covenant. People, if you're following that, you need to study and the Holy Spirit guides you. Now notice, right here in Daniel 9, 27, looking at the Greek. He shall strengthen. Now I want to show you where Paul, you find this strengthen. One place in the renewed covenant here, in the New Testament, this is Galatians 1.11. And this is where Paul uses this word here. In all power, that's dunamis, being strengthened. There's your 4.12. See, 4.12 comes from dunamis. Means dunamis there means mighty worker of miracles. The miracle is to be born of the Spirit and God's Spirit working in you to do both the will and His pleasure, people. This is a true miracle, not not healing of cancer or giving you a new job or all that made faith call it the word faith. They made now the word wishing. Uh, there's no other gift coming, people. This is the miracle, the testimony. Uh, the belief and the promise see Jesus Christ. And and notice, and this is the confirmation of the covenant. In all power being strengthened according to the might of his glory. In all patience and long suffering with joy. I'll get a hold of this people, but this is the same word that the Septuagint used in Daniel 9 27. Right here. Right here. It's the same word. Right here. Paul uses it in Galatians, uh, I mean, Colossians 1.11. And it's amazing. Okay, so I wanted to show you that. Now, what's amazing also, remember I, I showed you before that looking at the Septuagint, uh, right here, let me go to the Greek, uh, the Septuagint, Right here is, remember in the Septuagint, right here it is, uh, here it is, it's accusative singular feminine. Right here. Let me do this, put it back in yellow here. Now, so now, <clears throat> let me go back to the apostolic. So he shall strengthen or confirm the covenant with many. He says, in my blood covenant, that will be that my blood will be shed for many for the remission of sins. Same Greek word polis here, people. This is not people. I'm gonna say this over and over, and I've said it for years. But I'm showing you this because I found a few other words that I wanted to show you: the ratifying of the covenant in Galatians, and then this strengthened, and then Paul uses it in Colossians 1:11. The covenant is Christ made. The covenant with many, not the Antichrist people. There is no seven year tribulation covenant that he's made with Israel's going to, that Israel is going to make with the Antichrist and the church is going to be raptured out and then God's going to deal with the Jews for seven years, people. Uh, just study your scripture. Go over these things I've given you. Now, how important is it to understand just because we are in these times, just think about, if you don't understand, think they about this now. If you don't understand the covenant, the promise that God made with Abraham, and through Daniel, the covenant, the seven-year covenant here he's talking about, is with his people, the Jews. Now think about this. This is not talking about the covenant that goes to Abraham's seed, the father of blessed many nations. So he didn't make a seven year covenant with the spiritual seed through Abraham. That gospel has been preached for the last, that's the only gospel that's been preached for the last 2,000 years to the nations. Then Paul says, when the fullness of the Gentiles come in, I'm going to close with that here in just a second. Then all Israel will be saved. Well, see, but the covenant made in Daniel is Daniel is a prophet to Ju the Judah. 
where was Christ crucified? Was he crucified in Egypt? Was he crucified in any of these other nations that was, uh, was he crucified in Samaria? He was crucified in Jerusalem. He was cut off in the middle of the week. That's a period of three and a half years. Now, guess what? He, the, the two witnesses are going to confirm the debar because you got to have out of the mouth of two, uh, three witnesses. It will confirm the matter. So the last 42 months is going to be the witness of Elijah that will confirm and restore the 7,000 that did not because they're fixing to be resurrected, people. They're going to be resurrected with the body of Christ that's why they can't be completed until our testimony is complete. So that's why you got to have the two witnesses stand up, and that's why it's a seven-year covenant with them. It's not a seven-year covenant with us. <laughs> the gospel has been an Enonian gospel for the last 2,000 years, but to Jerusalem, because why? They're still in unbelief. So the many that he's making a covenant with uh, being the Jews or Judah, but also the Gentiles. That's the meaning. Okay, so very important that you come to understand that. And people are out here saying, now, the reason I'm saying this is because evidently, if you if you profess or following these false teachers is talking about the Antichrist is going to make a covenant, then you are in covenant with the Antichrist, evidently, because you don't even know the New Testament, what the New Testament covenant, the confirmed covenant is about. Are you in covenant with the Messiah? Are you part of the many that you, uh, are you in covenant with him by keeping his commandments and by the witness, the testimony, the spirit, the prophecy being confirmed in you? That's when you, that's the new covenant. That's the strengthening of the new covenant people through the spirit, through the promise of the spirit. Holy Spirit to, for God to send, and that uh, appointed time was Pentecost. So now, I mean, I, you just got to, you need to put on your thinking caps here, people, on your uh, studying to understand, to show yourself approved, rightly divide the word, the truth. So because the, the uh, that is, uh, Antichrist is going to make a covenant with the Antichrist. They're still in unbelief. Anybody in, in unbelief of who the Messiah is don't know the Father. You can't have the love of the Father in you. The love of the Father is that to keep his commandments and to believe that Christ is his Son, the Son of God. That's the number one commandment. Then love one another. People. That's, those are spiritual commandments. The law is spiritual. The law of faith is spiritual. Faith is a substance of things hoped for, but the evidence of things not seen. We walk by faith, not by sight, period, uh, people. I mean, I hope you're coming to see this, but go back over this because this is so important here at the end because most people, a bigger part of your so-called church is thinking they're leaving it, and then the Antichrist is going to do what it's going to do against the Antichrist Jews for three and a half years. That's not the teaching of Scripture. Daniel's talking about the blood covenant, the Messiah was cut off. I give you, I mean, and the same thing he confirms. How does he strengthen the covenant? Being born of the Spirit, people. Now he writes his laws on you. I'll make a new covenant, the house of Israel and the house of Judah. And I will put my laws, my commandments in their mind, the law of faith, and, and write it on the fleshly tables of heart, not on tables of stone anymore, people. All right, real quick, let me go to, uh, uh, let's see, where is it I was wanting to, got so many things running through my mind, but, uh, understanding we went through Galatians, Matthew right here. Let me show you this also. Matthew, this is Christ right at the Passover here. Going to 
Let's go over this because this is, when I told you the many here, uh, I'll confirm the covenant with many. Uh, right here is Passover, and this is verse 28. Lord's Supper here, Passover meal, night he was arrested. Right here he says, And having taken the cup and given thanks, he gave them, saying, He drank of it all. This command, For this is my blood, the blood of the new covenant, the one for many, being poured out for a release of sins. There it is right there. Many, right here, people. This is the word polis. It's, uh, it's the same word right here. It's the same word, polis. It's the same word as when you go back to right here. And he's just uh, strengthened the covenant with many. Right here. Right here. With many. Same word, people. It just proves that this is the New Testament covenant. But this covenant, uh, the, the Jews were in unbelief. So uh, when we go to what Paul said, as I close here, and Paul said this in Romans 11th chapter, right here. Uh, he talks to Elijah right here. He talks about, the 7,000 that didn't buy the need of Baal, right here. But he said, Elijah, what the answer of the Spirit of God unto him? I have reserved to myself 7,000 men who have not bowed the knee to image Baal. And then what does Paul reveal? Even so then, at this present time, also there is a remnant according to what? The election of grace. We're saved by grace through faith, the election. So that's the the, the remnant to the uh, promise seed through Abraham, which is Christ's seed, which is the nations. This is where the gospel is going to go. Now, at the last three and a half years, to finish the seventh year of the seventh year of Daniel, it's going to go back to Jerusalem, people. That's where the witnesses are going to stand up to confirm the debar, the word must establish the matter, the word. God does not do anything until he has out of the mouth of two or three witnesses to establish his word, the Debar in Hebrew. So now look what Paul says here. He says right here, when you read this, uh, right in 11.20, well, because of unbelief, Israel was broken off. But he said, don't thou stand as histomai but thou standest his to me by faith. Be not high-minded, but fear God. First, the fear of the Lord is wisdom and knowledge. Okay, now, this word his to me right here, Paul uses this word. Now look, but thou standest his to me by faith. Okay, now watch here, people. Let me show you. Now, Paul has already told us. When you, when you go back to Romans, i got to show you this. When you go back to Romans, the third chapter, this is the book of Romans. When you go back to Romans 3, look what Paul reveals in 3.25. Very important. you got to tie these scriptures together. Uh, who God has set forth at atonement through faith in his blood to declare his righteous for the remission of sins that are passed through the forbearance of God. What does he say? To declare, I say at this time, his righteousness that he be made just and the justifier of him which believeth in Christ and Jesus. Where's the boasting then, he said? By what law? The law of works? Moses' law? No. But by the law of faith. Right here. There he were. The law. There it is. The law of faith. Now, notice... When he closes down here, what does he say? Do thee, we make void the law through faith? God forbid. But we establish the law of faith through belief, people. We establish it now. There's that word histome. I'm showing you this. Pause. We establish the law. What law? 
law of faith. We believe God. We establish it. Now, that's the word histomai. Now, look what Paul says here in Romans 11. Well, because of unbelief, they were broken off. They didn't establish the law of faith. And thou standest, there's that word, thou standest by faith. Because we established the law of faith. That's the same word. That's why I took you back to Romans uh, 3.20. 328 to show you there's Paul used it again. But we standest or histomai by faith. Now look what Paul says here. For if God spared not the natural branches, least he spared not thee. Behold therefore goodness the severity of God, but toward thee goodness to continue in goodness, otherwise you can we can be cut off. And they also, if they abide not in unbelief, shall be grafted in, for the Spirit of God is able to graft them in again. Of course, they will be, the, the remnant will be when Christ comes. If thou were cut off out of the wild olive tree as wild by nature, and were grafted contrary to nature in a good olive tree, how much more would these, uh, which are be of the natural branches, be grafted back into their own olive tree or Israel? Okay, the mystery of Israel's salvation. For I not, brethren, you be ignorant of the mystery, that you be wise your own conceit, that blindness in part now has happened to the Gentiles till they come in. So why? Because they were cut off. Christ was cut off by them in the middle of the week. There again, they went into destruction by 70 AD. The Spirit of God didn't dwell there anymore. And so it was cut off. Now there's another 42 months that the Antichrist uh, that will th that which they think is going to be their Messiah. So the, the Antichrist, their Messiah is coming because they did not love the truth that Paul reveals people. What is the truth? If you love God and believe in the Son of God and love one another, that's the love of God through Christ that he gives us those commandments. And we have eternal life. Now, they didn't believe in him. They still don't believe in him. So they are looking and they think they're Messiah. And that's why they're going to start the abomination. They're going to start sacrificing animals. Now, what did Daniel say? That desolation upon desolation, abominations on abominations unto the consummation. So the last three and a half years when God confirms the seven years with Israel and Jerusalem by the two witnesses, are they going to believe the two witnesses? What are they going to kill them for? See, but when that happens, then sudden destruction comes, people. Yes, Israel will be trotted down for 42 months, but the great sudden destruction or the greatest tribulation that's ever been will ever be again is when Christ comes to destroy those that come against Israel and take vengeance on those that obeyed not the gospel of Abraham, which becomes our gospel, and know not Yahweh, people. That's the greatest decimation that's ever going to be or will be again. And Christ is the one that's going to take vengeance. He is going to make war they're going to make war with the witnesses. And then they're going to make war with the Lamb, and the Lamb will get the victory, of course. So this is, this is the seven year, not a seven year covenant with us. Those that are in Christ and Christ is in, we're in the covenant. You've been baptized into one spirit. We're all members of the same body. But this is talking about Jerusalem. And all these people out here, they don't, they don't even know what the new covenant is or the promise seen through Abraham. So hopefully this will help you understand this. And this is when, uh, so when the fullness of Gentiles come in, notice. And so all Israel shall be saved. As it is written, there shall come out, this means actually physically, out of Zion, the Deliverer, the Messiah, and he shall turn away ungodliness from Jacob. Now let me ask you before I close, how is he going to turn away ungodliness from Jacob? How is he going to do that? Let's see what the scripture, let's see what Paul says right here. For this is my covenant 
right here, right here, here it is, the new covenant. This is my covenant that man made with the Son of Man, uh, Abraham with the Son of Man, Christ, that kept his word, that done the will of the Father. This is my covenant unto them when I shall take away their sins. Take away their sins of what? They're in unbelief. And they, when they see the sign and mourn for the one they pierced, they're going to beat their chest and mourn as a remnant will and God will grant them mercy and grace and he will take the scales off their eyes and they will repent and, and Christ will rescue them when he gets here by the same covenant that he saved us with, people. Amazing. But right here is the New Testament covenant. They're not in covenant. They was not in covenant 2,000 years ago. They will not be in covenant when they stand up and those two witnesses uh, pour out the plagues and testify and prophesy for three and a half years. But when they see the sign of the Son of Man after those uh, last 42 months, which I, I've showed you through the Enoch calendar, that'll be on the 10th day of the first month. And that's when they always chose the Lamb to kill. But when they see the power of God which at the right hand of the Father stand up, they know the right hand in the temple was when the high priest went in as the right hand to sprinkle the altar uh, with the blood on the altar uh, to, to forgive Israel's sins. Well, they know, and that's why Christ told them the night he was arrested, next time you see me, you'll see me talking to the Jews, talking to the Sanhedrin, talking to uh, the progenitors of Judah. The next time you see me, you'll see me coming from the right hand of the Father, the Father with power and great glory in the clouds. And that's when they rent, the high priest ran his clothes, which broke the Torah, actually, by tearing his priestly clothing. But the point being, this time, they're not going to rent their clothes. They're going to beat their chest and mourn. May the God of Abraham, Isaac, and Jacob, may that spirit witness your spirit that we trade these scriptures with one another. In the name of our Lord Jesus Christ, soon coming King. Amen.